I don't know what to say, really. Three minutes till the biggest battle of our professional lives all comes down to today. Either we heal as a team or we're going to crumble. Inch by inch, play by play. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Welcome to another new week here in the NFL. In fact, we are one week away from having started Free Agent Frenzy, where the Cowboys have done one move signing Eric Kendrick. Now, I am the guy who likes to try and be Mr. Positivity, and I will say that I think the Cowboys are doing a mini rebuild. Typically, Stephen Jones is always talking about, you know, we believe in our own guys. Well, it seems like you let a lot of your own guys go. Now, we'll see if you end up replacing them with players in kind. Um, we do have something that's happened this morning. Here's where it's interesting to me, okay? Dak Prescott, there's some movement on his contract this morning. It's not exactly what you may think. But let me take you back a little bit here. Um, we had Dan Graziano saying back in September the Dallas Cowboys could save $34 million of the cap if Dak Prescott is traded or cut before March 2024. Um, the, the thing was, sooner or later, the Cowboys have to put their money where the mouth is with starting quarterback Dak Prescott. The two-time Pro Bowler is due uh, to be a free agent after the 24 season, Dan Graziano noted Thursday. However, the Cowboys have a possibility out um, this offseason. He wrote, Dallas could save $34 million against the cap by cutting or trading Dak Prescott before his roster bonus kicks in next March. He's due to have $29 million in base salary for 24, and his bonus totals $5 million. Graziano added the odds dramatically favor Dak Prescott getting an extension. Now, what he didn't say in there is, yes, they would create um, a cap room there, but it would end up going into the, one of the voidable years. So we are now beyond that idea that Dan Graziano had because the Cowboys got... Uh, took Dak Prescott's bonus money, which was actually 10, roster bonus money, which was actually $10 million, and they converted five of it into a signing bonus. And they added two voidable years to it. So what happens is Dak Prescott's cap number goes down by $5 million. So the Cowboys now have $9.5 million on the cap, and they have two voidable years. Now, here's where I am Joe the fan. I am, you know, a guy who loves the Cowboys and wants to see them be successful and so on. And I don't know exactly how this would work. And I'm not sure that the Cowboys understand exactly how everything works for them as well. But my question here is, and this is a very interesting question. This means that there are two more voidable years on Dak Prescott's contract. So in my mind, I don't know how the rules work, but if you have four voidable years on a contract, hypothetically, I think that would actually make it a little more palatable to let him go. And my reason being is um, we have a $36 million plus whatever the additional money, the additional four. So $41 million, that's now um, a dead hit in 2024. If they can spread that out so it's only a $10 million dead hit each of those years, which is a little easier to go, considering that the Cowboys usually have about $20 million in dead money every year anyway. So that's not like it's something that would be a brand new. Now, this does, again, give them a little bit more money to work into free agency. The question is always with the Cowboys, whether they have money or not, is will they actually do anything? Um, they took dead money hits because of Tony Romo's contract when he got hurt uh, through Dak Prescott's first year. 
But in the next three years when they weren't paying that, they didn't do anything as far as going into free agency to do anything to help build the roster. So I think we're talking about something that the Cowboys just don't do. Now, here's where... I'll save it for later. I'll save it for later because I'm still working my mind here. What doesn't make sense to me is the idea that we're going to wait until August to do Dak Prescott's contract. I don't get that one. Um, I don't know if they're thinking that the price is going to go down because they're going to wait longer or what. But I don't know the sense of, eh, we'll do it when we'll do it. I don't know if this is, we want to wait for this legal case to blow over or what. But to me, you want to get that money if you are really talking about going all in sooner than later. Am I right? Or maybe the idea is, if we have that money, we'll spend it and we're better off to wait to get it, which could be the case then. So between now and June 1st, at the moment, the Cowboys have $18 million of money, which is enough to go ahead and sign their rookie class and to get some warm bodies put on the roster to at least fill in the 16 spaces that they've lost. So let's go to the tape here. And um, we've made a few changes here at Jobu Studio, and we're still getting used to doing them. Um, yesterday is they've done a good job of attracting and acquiring a lot of talent the teams that are good and have drafted well pay the guys you got if you're out in this free agent frenzy paying big bucks for players that suggests that you haven't done as good a job and they can't spend a lot of money on these players because they do have a lot of good players that they need to pay and they can't tie up their money in uh, free agent understood which brings me to a couple of questions the first one dan is for you there is a perception out there and i i think i am one of the people who hold it but i will defer to your expertise is the dak prescott contract looming over them hamstringing what the cowboys are able to do look if you have a 59 and a half million dollar cap charge assigned to one player it has to right like you're working around that no matter what the cowboys would tell you well he's the quarterback right like if you're gonna lay it out so so they they either have to extend him or get comfortable with the idea of working around that number and so far they haven't been able to extend him and we'll see what happens there but I don't think I, I don't think it, I think it would be foolish to say that that's not a factor. I mean, you know, they they have a budget assigned for free agency that that might conceivably be larger if their quarterback's cap hit weren't the highest in the league. I think it's a factor, but we have to acknowledge that we all warned them about this years ago when yeah. they were franchising yes. Dak and franchising Dak and messing around with his contract. I think this is uh, this is mismanagement, honestly, how they ended up in a situation when you had a quarterback that you knew was going to be here for a long time. Yeah. You sign him to a deal as early as you possibly can. You don't get in a situation where he has all the leverage. I think I think that uh, when you look at Patrick Mahomes, he set the model, right? Yeah. Give him a 10-year contract. That you, that's really a dummy contract right. that mm -hmm. you can always prorate, steal money, give him uh, signing bonuses, things of that sort, if he was going to be your guy. But I do agree with Dominique that I think, you know, this is a good – I think they've done a good job. I think they're staying patient. I think this is all in. Whenever you got to pay your quarterback maybe 55 to $60 million, you look at Brian's Burns deal, well, Michael Parsons is going to say, I'm better than that guy. Right, right. That's going to be plus $30 million a year, right? Mm -hmm. And then you look at C.D. Lamb. C.D. Lamb is waiting for jo Jordan jo Justin, Justin Jefferson. Jefferson to get paid because he wants to go afterwards so he can top the number. That's going to be $28 million a year. Right. How much money do you really have? No, I understand that. But what, what the, another way of saying what you just said, Bart, is they're just basically going to have the same players. They're just going to be paying them a lot more than they have been previously. Exactly. And as a consequence, they're going to lose a bunch of other ones. So someone explain right. to me, how you, they get better you have they, to you have to graduate it, yeah. you have to develop players within your in your system i think you know being able to go get uh kendrick's I, listen i've always been a fan of his for people who really don't know who he is and what he did yeah, in minnesota good. he was a pro bowler he's a guy that understands it, he's just as good or better than than vanderish he's going to sure that linebacker position up he's going to make sure that he mans the middle now they just have to figure out the running back situation, which everybody here has told us is easy to fill through college or through free agency. The way, the way you get better is the way that they've stayed good this entire time is you draft well. Right. We keep talking about getting cheap talent. 
Um, quarterbacks on rookie deals are not the only ones that matter on rookie deals. They've had right. Micah Parsons and CeeDee Lamb on rookie deals up until this point. Mm -hmm. They try to spend money to build around them. They can go out and get Gilmore. They can go out and get Cooks. They can go out and get... So that's how it's going to work. They're going to have to pay the guys that they have, but they're going to have to hit in the draft, and they've been doing it. So, like, we have to trust the process that they've, the uh, they've been using up until now. The draft Maybe. in a salary cap league is about finding val getting value in the first four or five years of a player's career, getting high-end production for low-end prices. And they've excelled at that. They've won 12 games three years right. in a row. They're doing exactly. something right. When you win 12 games, you don't have a lot of improvement to do. You just need right. to get somebody to get you over the top. When you talk about all in, who knows? Somebody's going to fall through the cracks, right? You look at still good free agents there. Somebody's going to sign a one-year deal, prove it deal, try and get back right, and they'll be able to pump. And there's a draft. Uh, yes. and, right, there are three different ways you acquire players, right? Free agency, trades, and the draft. Right. The draft is, 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 to your point, and last year, the most efficient one. Yeah, last year they waited out free agency. They trade for Brandon Cooks. They trade for Stephon Gilmore. Low prices. I mean, those were good deals. And, and maybe they'll work out. Yes, look, no one can argue that they haven't been successful. The problem is that during this period of time where oh, they've had all these yeah. players on these young deals, they've won a combined total of one playoff game, yeah. and that sort of has become yeah. the yeah. measurement right? Right? When you keep that. winning well, 12 games, that's, I don't think that's, you fix that that's in fine. March. Yeah, that's fine. But that's what I'm saying. The reason why they've only, they haven't gone deep into the playoffs is not because they haven't gotten a major free agent. You're not going to yeah. solve that now. We can point to a lot of different things, but it's not because they haven't gone and made a big splash in free agent. Maybe, maybe not. Like a lot of us thought that Derek Henry. I got to be a little careful. Okay, we're going to leave it right there. So, there you have it. The Cowboys created $5 million of cap space. And they also maybe have an easier out to get rid of Dak Prescott. I'm Mark Holmes, and as always, I appreciate you, and I'll see you soon. Peace.